Hello everyone and welcome to the February update of the RMS Queen Mary construction. Now I have a list of notes here to make everything go a lot faster and a lot smoother so I'll begin reading right now. Welcome to the February 2023 construction update of the RMS Queen Mary in Long Beach, California. Some of this information regarding the condition of the Queen Mary may contradict what you've heard on the news and social media, and that is because the media makes money by selling you stories of doom and gloom. Also, I don't have photographs of the work that was done to the ship because most of the work being done with is within the ship and out of view. So first, I am Alex. My YouTube channel is Alex the Historian. I fell in love with the RMS Queen Mary during my last visit to the ship in January of 2020, prior to its closure during the pandemic. I have since produced a lot of informative and historical content on the design, function, and history of the ship, and along the way I've befriended many historians and insiders who are either directly or indirectly associated with the ship, and this is how I present the most accurate information I possibly can to the community of Queen Mary fans who would otherwise be left in the dark about the information regarding the ship and its current condition. It's been exactly one year since repairs started on the ship, and while it has taken time, many of those repairs have been completed or, or are in the final stages of completion. First, let's talk about the hull. As stated numerous times on this channel, the hull is in remarkably good condition for its 92 years of age. Ultrasound inspections done by divers reveal that the average thickness of the hull plates is one inch thick. This is twice as thick as the hull plates of most cruise ships. And the waterline of the ship has little to no corrosion. This is due to the still functioning sacrificial cathodic anode system that was installed along the hull back in the year 1970. It seems that in the last few months the anode system has been receiving maintenance, but I'll need to confirm whether that is true. As for the ship's waterline, up until the early 2000s, the waterline would be regularly repainted by shifting the ballast on the ship to tilt the ship a few degrees to port and then starboard, and then forward and aft. It seems last month that waterline repair might be underway again, but I would need additional information to confirm it. In the last update, I mentioned that the 66 double bottom keel ballast tanks and the wing tanks were in the process of inspection, which required removing the drill mud ballast and using equipment to survey the bottom keel. Those inspections should be completed by now, save for maybe a tank or two that is still finishing inspection, but otherwise it seems that while the ship is showing its age, there have been no issues to report. It's also important to mention that there have been numerous rumors over the years that the ship has sprung a leak and the compartments have been flooded with seawater. This is not true. The ship has never sprung a seawater leak. Though there were times when plumbing from the hotel above has leaked and flooded the floors of the tank top, or occasionally the gaskets on the wing tanks have failed and leaked ballast water onto the tank top. These issues have since been resolved and rust abatement projects completed. When it comes to the hotel portion of the ship, plumbing has been receiving numerous repairs and replacements. The final plumbing work should be completed next month. The hotel rooms have been receiving a deep cleaning along with brand new door locks and air conditioning repairs. When the ship reopens in spring, around 100 of the hotel rooms should be available for booking, with more coming online in the months that follow. Throughout the Queen Mary, light fixture repairs and replacements have been underway. LED lights and fixtures have been replacing aging fluorescent lights. The city of Long Beach has expressed that the ship's interiors will be more brightly illuminated due to all the repairs to broken light fixtures and dim lamps. In the main hall of the Queen Mary, work will begin on replacing the old flooring, which was installed in the mid-1990s, with a historically accurate linoleum floor that the city says will replicate the original floors from 1947. The observation bar at the front of the ship will also receive new linoleum floors to replace the rotting carpeting that was also installed in the 1990s. These floors are expected to be historically accurate as well. The observation bar will be receiving new period-appropriate furniture to replace the confused mess of cheap furniture that migrated into this room over the decades. The city of Long Beach has stated that certain areas of the ship with aging carpeting will be replaced with new carpeting. 
They haven't stated what specific areas will be redone, but it is more likely that the priority is the various staircases throughout the ship, which have been duct taped over the years just to keep them together. Throughout the Queen Mary, a deep cleaning has been underway to clean and polish the various handrails, brass fixtures, historic rare wood veneers, and other decorative features. The 4D Theater, the Engine Room, and the Winston Churchill Exhibit have been undergoing a deep cleaning and equipment check to get the spaces ready for visitors. On the outside of the ship, there's been an ongoing project to repair and restore the teak wood decks and handrails. This project may still be underway when the ship reopens to the public. In the next week or so, exterior paint work will begin on the ship. Areas in need of attention will receive repainting. This also includes the repainting of the aft funnel. That paint job was botched when a heat wave struck the region while that funnel was getting coated. As a result, the paint bubbled and could not stick to the stainless steel shell of the funnel and has been chipping ever since. So the new paint job will fix that issue. Do not expect the funnels to be repainted a more historically accurate Cunard orange, as that color fades quickly in sunlight. Even the Cunard company no longer uses that color for that very reason. As for the lifeboats, everybody knows that the majority of lifeboats were removed from the ship to relieve the upper decks of the strain of around 300,000 pounds of weight. The davits on the ship help support the weight of the lifeboats and the weight of the sun deck by spreading that weight onto the promenade deck below. But many of the davits have been corroded at the base, resulting in the weight transferring onto the side shell, which was not designed to bear the full brunt of the weight. Two lifeboats remain on the ship for restoration. The city has confirmed that in the coming months, work will begin on restoring those. Another lifeboat remains on the dock and is currently undergoing some restoration so that visitors can walk around it and take pictures with it. Another five lifeboats have been saved from destruction and remain stored in a city annex. The hope is that sometime in the future, the davits can be repaired and possibly the remaining lifeboats, plus lightweight replicas, can be placed back up. But this project is not a high priority compared to the more important projects happening around the ship right now. Watertight bulkheads down in the engineering spaces of the ship had been cut through in the 1970s to remove all the boilers and generators on the ship. Five of these bulkheads have now been raised higher to prevent the spread of a leak, should one occur. The ship didn't have working bilge pumps for the last 30 years, and now it is receiving brand new sets of 11 bilge pumps plus automatic water intrusion alarms designed to activate the pumps. The pump platforms and plumbing systems have been installed. The city is just awaiting the arrival of the new pumps before the ship can reopen to the public. The ship is also receiving a brand new emergency power generator, used to keep the safety systems functional in the case of a shoreside power failure. This generator is currently being installed on the dock and will run an electrical connection to the ship via a cable. Also on the dock is the hotel boiler system, which was installed in the early 1970s and was no longer functional when the ship closed in 2020. They have now been demolished, and the new boilers will be arriving in the coming days. These boilers provide hot water to the ship's restaurant, kitchens, and hotel rooms. Contrary to the belief of some, it would not be wise to place these boilers on the ship, since it would not be easy to install them or access them if they need to be maintained or removed. In the kitchens of the ship's restaurants, a deep cleaning is underway along with the replacement of aging equipment and ventilation systems with brand new equipment. This was a necessary expense in order to keep to the health code and to efficiently serve paying customers. The ship is expected to reopen to the general public in early spring. Sources say that the goal is to reopen sometime in April. It's really important to mention that at the moment, you cannot trust the Queen Mary website or Google for information on booking or tickets. This is because there is currently no one manning those websites. They have been abandoned since summer of 2020. If you are waiting for information regarding booking and tickets, either check back on my channel or check back on the Queen Mary Hotel Facebook page to see when and where you can book rooms or buy tickets. When the ship reopens to the general public, it is expected you will have to pay a parking fee, but the details of the pricing and whether you can get your parking validated is currently being decided on by city officials. 
There is no word yet on how much the admission will cost to get on the ship, but representatives from Evolution Hospitality have stated that when you buy an admission ticket, you will get a tour included, and you can purchase additional tours if you wish. They have also expressed interest in introducing some kind of dining package in the future, where it may be possible to pay only a discounted price on admission if you are only on the ship to dine at a restaurant, but that is all in the planning stages right now. As of this moment, you can purchase an annual pass to the Queen Mary at a cost of $150. This money will go directly towards the repairs of the ship, and the pass validates when the ship officially reopens. I will provide a link in the description for where you can get the pass. Another interesting thing to note was that Doug Parsons, who is the director of attractions and ticketing for the Queen Mary, has stated that the much-beloved Sunday brunch aboard the ship will return and would include admission aboard the ship as part of the pricing. He also said that when the ship reopens, the hotel, dining, attractions, and museum areas aboard the ship should all reopen with it as well. He said something that I thought was particularly interesting as part of the greater conversation about memberships, voucher programs, and ticketing. He said, quote, We can't just let people roam around the ship without making sure they are there for a reason, that they're not just going to walk around and ghost hunt. Then he went on to say, We don't want anyone disturbing our hotel guests late at night. End quote. While I'm not 100% certain what this will mean, it does sound a lot like the rules that were in place up until a decade ago. Back then, only hotel guests could roam around certain areas on main deck, A deck, and B deck. There were attendants by the staircases and elevators to make sure you were only entering areas you were designated to go. Not to mention, beefed up security back then made it more difficult to explore areas you were not supposed to be as opposed to the years leading up to the closure in 2020. So it's possible that only hotel guests can explore the majority of the ship as it used to be. And I must say it made me happy to hear that Evolution Hospitality is concerned about the issue of the rogue ghost hunters who run around the ship, breaking into off-limit areas and disturbing hotel guests with all the noise and evidence planting they do for their paranormal YouTube channels. The ship and the hotel guests deserve more respect than that nonsense. Now, on a different topic, I have a message to those who question Long Beach's decision to preserve the ship. You have to remember, the last time the ship was open, it was being leased from the city by a third-party company who ran the ship and collected the profits. One of the biggest reasons the ship has fallen into such disrepair over the years is not because the ship never turned a profit. No. Anyone who says that is either misinformed or is lying. The ship has always turned a profit, but the various companies that have operated the ship rarely reinvested that profit back into the ship's maintenance, and even when they did, they would cut corners. This time, there is no middleman. The city of Long Beach will reinvest all the profits back into the ship's maintenance. That, along with the $2.5 million a year generated by the Carnival Cruise Terminal, will pay for the $5 million a year annual maintenance the ship requires. On the screen right now are some basic facts and figures about how the Queen Mary earns many times more money per year for the city of Long Beach and the county of Los Angeles than she will cost to be repaired. The ship's repairs and maintenance over the coming years may amount to $300 million, but as you can see, with the money she generates for the region, she can pay that money off in less than three years. For those who say the Queen Mary is a money pit, they don't know the definition of that term, because a money pit does not generate more money than it consumes. The reason the Queen Mary got into such a dire situation in the first place was due to the mistake of handing off the ship on a master lease to corporation after corporation. Now, the city of Long Beach is in control, and they want the Queen Mary to be a lasting symbol of not only perseverance and resilience, but also that of prosperity. The next time I post a repair update, the Queen Mary might already be open to visitors, and when that happens, I'll be able to more accurately report the repairs that have been made aboard the ship, and how it has benefited the ship. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.